have to rearrange and get good light, huh? How you doing, Jay? I'm doing good. We're busy. <laughs> this this looks like it's in your face, but it's way back here okay. over here. So today we're out here with Jay, and uh, Jay is showing us how to build a. What do you call it? Mass heater. Yes, thank you. This Jay. is a batch box. Batch box. Now explain batch box. How that differs from a regular. You make one batch of wood and you let it burn. For how long? I don't know how long this one will do. It will be more than thirty minutes. And this is utilizing an old wood stove. It looks like. Yes. Um. We've, so we completely replaced all of the fire brick inside. We upgraded to a dense sand-based brick. Uh -huh. It came with these perlite blocks. Okay. And so we put them on the outside of the stove for insulation and to use them up because they're not worth having. Okay. All right. We've seen, we saw this stove before in its first iteration. What were the problems with it that you wanted to change? I did not like having to come in here and feed it every 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And so your hope is that it'll, you'll have to feed it what once and then be done with it for the night. I don't mind feeding it every hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I've never had a wood stove this small. Uh huh. So I don't know how long it's going to burn. Okay. But I would like to not have to stay up till two o'clock in the morning and wake up at six o'clock or five to come heat it so that things don't freeze in. Okay. And just to be clear, this is inside your greenhouse. Yes. Okay. And you have designed this to keep the greenhouse warm during the winter months. Yes. So in your first iteration of this stove, you mentioned that you were able to get the, the uh, temperature in the soil bank around here that the flu runs through. And this Anywhere is the soil from bank. 100 plus mm -hmm. to 80s to 60s. 60s back exhaust. there. Okay. And let me see. It looks like you've got about, what, 15, about what, 30, 35, yeah. 40 feet maybe of uh, a flu. In the 30, okay. 30 foot range. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Plus all of that residual heat when it comes into the atmosphere. There's no insulation here because we're in zone seven. Yeah. It also helps heat the rest of the house too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your greenhouse is actually attached to the house. Yeah, and it's it's on a slope, upward slope. Uh -huh. We get uh, zone temperatures. This is the coldest area and it is about 10 degrees colder than the upper level. And the upper level is almost 10 degrees colder than inside. Okay. So what you've done basically is you've put the wood stove in what what most greenhouses would call your cold sink area. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now. And eventually we already have tubing in the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's just we're going to have to study and research where I'm standing. There is a 55 gallon barrel in the ground uh -huh. that will be a heat reservoir. Okay. And we're going to figure out a safe way for this to heat that water. And then we'll have a pump circulated through the floor. Okay. Harvestmen, that's uh -huh. what they're called? That is their proper name. They're called Daddy Long Legs. Yeah. I would be delighted if I can get that, if it will burn hot enough mm -hmm. to get the heat in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping only three burns for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. That'd be great. It's only a matter of keeping the frost out during those few hours at night. Mm -hmm. You know, and 32 degrees outside is not a problem in here. We don't need extra heat. We have to get down. Uh, 28. We've had 28 degrees in here and cold damage on the citrus and avocado, mm -hmm. but they survived. Okay. Any colder than that, they don't. Yeah. As any citrus grower will tell you, when you get down to freezing or near around freezing, just even circulating the air helps a lot. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this design here. We've obviously got the feed box down there, the batch box, which is a wood stove uh -huh. that you're converting. And then Obviously, we've got a the beginnings of the reburn a chamber. High temperature here. riser. Uh huh. Um, it's very important. Um, all the experts on it now are saying don't even bother with stainless steel in a riser because it just gets too hot, and they do that spalting where big flakes uh -huh. come off yeah. the inside. Yeah, it'll flake off. Yeah. Um, and then this will be insulated with a perlite and clay blend. Okay, and the perlite and clay will come out. What to up? the wire. To that's, the that's screen. The wire, yeah. Okay, to the screen. All right. That's, mm -hmm. All of that needs to be firmly packed. Mm -hmm. And we'll have mud running out all over the stove, but that's okay. And that's perlite and clay. Uh -huh. And then the reburn chamber or barrel. The barrel will sit. Right over top right of it top with top a gap of a what? About two inches? About. Two and a half? Yeah. yeah, something like that. That's the goal. And then how much clearance will you have at the top? 
Um, we'll set some two by four sections across there and they will burn out. Yep. But they will support it while the cob dries. Right. Okay. Now this is your mix of perlite and clay slip. Yes. Okay. And of course we're in the central U.S. state of Oklahoma here, so the clay here is very, very red. A lot of iron oxide in it. And it's high in magnesium. That's part of the reason why it is so sticky. Huh. Even though it is so wet. It's a little wet, but it's holding together. Yeah. yeah. That, that one's a weak spot. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Holds together pretty well. Considering how wet it is. Yeah. That's doing very, very well. Let's come over here and <clears throat> do the spaghetti on the wall test. Try it. And then your plan from here is, uh, what, bury the barrel in, what, a few inches of cob? Yes. Cob will seal the bottom of it. Yeah. In this area, the exhaust is going to be very hot. Uh-huh. And this will be more resistant to cracking. Are you happy with the way it's going? I am. Okay. I'm just I'm so pleased with my first made it all by myself back to mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with that. Good. So you've pretty much got this stove surrounded in perlite and slip mm -hmm. mixture. And now we're starting on the cob, which is this little darker stuff. How you doing there, Robert? Okay. Now I don't know where to go now. Let me see. We'll come around to the front. Sort of covering it up. So we got the reburn barrel on, the reburn chamber is in place. You're getting ready to do a test burn, right? Yep. I gotta watch and see what I gotta do. Well, it is coming out that chimney. I'm gonna check is it? That. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever seen a rocket stove in use. Yeah. 